Hi again, everybody. It's Rosalind back at you. I hope everybody's having a blessed day, starting off with Prosperous Week. Um, there were some things that uh, I forgot to add. Um, it was busy earlier um, with everybody going, you know, getting ready for work, um, getting ready for school and everything. So there were some things that I got sidetracked about that uh, I know was left unsaid. Um that I really didn't get a chance to finish. So, um, basically, uh, what I was saying earlier is like a part that where I want to come back um, to come stay with my uh, adopted dad and his wife. Um, back when I was 15, it was, matter of fact, that was when I came and found out that I was adopted um, around that time. And it was right before, you know, school had started back in. Um, and, uh, it was like we would get these random phone calls all type of day and night, you know, and this is when Call ID first came out. And um I would constantly see like Paisley Park at that time I called it Paisley Park. Or I saw Nelson Rogers on um the caller ID, so I really didn't know how it worked at that time, so I didn't know if his name was Nelson Rogers or Rogers Nelson. But um, he would call like periodically. It was like not periodically, but like clockwork. It was like every five or ten minutes. You know, there'll probably be a couple hours that go by. But it went on for like about a month. And um, I finally picked up the phone. I'm like, why the heck do these people keep calling or whatever like that? And then um, next, you know, um, I had talked to my doctor dad, and I was just like. Hey, somebody from this place called. I said, what's the Peasley Park? And his face went like this. Like, oh my God. Uh, you know, started looking around the room and, you know, started looking all crazy. I'm like, what's going on? You know, what, what's the Paisley Park? You know, they, they keep calling all type of days, all type of nights. And you guys aren't here. And then he was like, well, did you answer the phone? And at that time, I didn't. So, um, then I, I started noticing how my dad was acting like he... You know, they were saying that they had a lawsuit against the owner of Paisley Park. Um, and it was for harassment. And I was just like, well, who's the owner? And they were never, oh, it's not important. It's nobody. You know, we, you know, they just been harassing. Never told me what the harassment was about. Never seen them go to court or anything. And then till one day, you know, the Paisley Park kept calling. And then the next thing, you know, Nelson Rogers called. Or Rogers Nelson that I did not know at the time that was my dad and I talked to him so yes I have talked to him more than once but I never knew that the first time when I talked to him when I was like five years old four or five years old and when I went like 10 years later you know he was this is before he you know Jehovah's Witness and everything he was still saying what he really felt you know and um he didn't have anything really nice to say about my stepmom because he thought I was hurt so he was just calling all type of names except the one, you know, her mom, you know, her mom gave her child to God. And he was saying, you know, I want to keep, I want to see my daughter. You know, I don't like being ignored. You know, I know you guys see my phone calls. I need to see my daughter. You effing da 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 keep, you know, keeping my daughter away from me. So, you know, um, I, I had told my stepmom. You know, when she had came from work that day, you know, because I told him, you know, it's my kids calling from Pace Park. And they would call every five minutes. Do not tell them your name. Do not, you know, if they ask you who you are, don't say your name. You know, did they say, you know, uh, why they were calling or what they called for? And I told her, you know, look, I got the number. He was like, you know, uh, he didn't have really nice things. He's like, what did he say? I said, I really don't want to repeat what he said. And she's like, well, what did he say? And I said, well, he called you an F and B. <laughs> and he said, I know y'all y'all B's are keeping me away from my, my, char my child, my daughter. You know, and I want to see my daughter. You know, <clears throat> I have every right to see my daughter. Why are you keeping her from me? So um, I started noticing they got really paranoid. Like, they were really scared. Like, they never wanted us to answer the phone. Me or my stepbrother to ever answer the phone. And, um... You know, it, it's just crazy because it's like through my whole life, I did not remember a lot of the things from my childhood because it was so bad because I never really had anybody to talk to about my feelings because I was 
blunt <laughs> as a child that it was certain things that you know I wasn't trying to be disrespectful but it was just the things I guess I was saying it was just a little bit too blunt to like people you know I would always have a thing where people would think it I would just think it and just say it so um and it was just like I I didn't understand why you know why they were acting crazy or you know why were they being so you know questioning me about um you know why what did I say or who did he say he was or who did he say you know did he explain the reason why I kept calling I was wondering why so I said you know what I'm gonna find this you know I'm gonna go ahead and call when she leaves she went through the whole house and erased all the numbers off the caller ID the paper that I had written down, she only took two or three papers to make sure I didn't even get the number off the imprint, off of the paper that I wrote it off of. That's how sneaky they were. Um, <clears throat> and then the next thing, you know, I said, you know what, when he calls back next time, I'm going to make sure I answer the phone. So I was just like, oh gosh, please call. You know, and it got to the point where they would take the phones out of the house while they were gone. That's how, that's how deep that secret was. And it's crazy because I'm starting to remember all this stuff now. Like, I never knew that was really important because, you know, I didn't know who a Nelson Rogers was. Um, I didn't know what a Paisley Park was at, at one time because I never, you know, they made sure that anything that had anything to do with my dad, I, I was, you know, I was, they, they wouldn't let me stay, see anything that had anything to do with my dad for me to put two and two together at all. And um, it just seemed like after he passed, it was like I didn't even remember that I talked to him until I heard um, this uh, download that I had. It was it was supposed to be Breakfast Can Wait, but it was a different song. It was like a whole bunch of his songs put together in like a you know set, you know 117 minutes. And he just so happened to be on an interview where. Um, he was talking to somebody and they were like asking about the Charlie Murphy uh, basketball with pancakes. You know, he had to think about pancakes. And I remember I had headphones on at the time. I had, you know, these headphones on and I was just listening and I said, oh my God, that's Uncle Roger. And I just felt, you know, my hair just fly, you know, and there was no wind or anything. And I just started crying and everything. And I was just wondering, you know, because when this first came out and I found out he had passed away, I didn't even know if he knew about me or not. You know, because my mom had always told me that um, that he was my father. Um, that, well, she didn't always tell me he was my father, but she always wanted me to be connected with him. You know, if he called, you know, uh, the time when he had called back when we were in Germany, um, you know, she was just like, Hey, let him know that you're friends with him. You know, I hate saying that word. You know, I just tell him I love him. I, you know, I, even at the, when I was little, I never liked saying his name as much. Um, and she was just like, make sure you tell him that. You know, maybe, you know, she was looking to make sure my dad didn't hear her. And she was like, well, make sure you can try to see if you can get some tickets. You know, if they come overseas, you may, maybe, you know, Uncle Roger, you know, you can see Uncle Roger and meet, you know, uh, Prince at the same time. Because she knew I idolized Prince a lot. And um, it, it, it's just, you know, going through this experience and, you know, finding out more about myself and more childhood memories that I suppressed because, you know, I know it was so, you know, gut riching to me. You know, it came back all at full force. You know, it just seemed like things that you, you know, when you're a child, if, you, if you've been um, in any kind of abuse or, uh, Anything that's happened to you that has scarred you mentally uh, or emotionally, you you want to forget that, you know. And I remember I had to go to a through a lot of therapy, you know, because they said, oh, you're acting too sensitive, you're acting like, you know, you're acting too needy, and all I wanted was love, and I really didn't feel that, you know. After my parents got divorced, I didn't feel that, you know, they didn't treat me right, you know. They would always say you know, negative things to me, or, you know, try to intentionally hurt me, and, you know, um, just learning that, you know, I'm like, wow, I'm an indigo, it just sounds so angelic, so magical, you know, I'm like, you know, you only hear stuff about that on TV, but it's just like the more research that I find out, 
you know, more research that I read and, you know, look at different videos, there's a lot of people out there like me. Um, I just uh, started watching uh, this nice Kendrick soul. I love her to death. Uh, she, she's, um, her name is Sanchez. Sanch- Solstress or Solstress 1111. She's like, if you go through anything, you know, um, her her videos was one of the first ones that I've seen. And, you know, it brought tears to my eyes. So if she watches this video, thank you so much. You have helped me out a lot, you know, um, because I didn't really know, you know, I didn't like school. You know, I I was set up there. And, um, uh, I really couldn't get it, you know, I mean, but if I, if I was to go home and watch the same stuff or go read about it in a book or whatever, I would get it off of that, but I just didn't know what was it about school, I just didn't like, I used to skip school, you know, I mean, you know, education is really good, but it's just like, you know, I looked at school like, you know, I know it's good to have to know all these things, but when you get out in the real world, you know, um, you don't use all those things that you learn in school. They don't teach you how to, you know, uh, live without your parents. Or they don't tell you how how to, you know, add up a checkbook or budget your money. You know, they don't tell you about everyday life that you need to know. You know, you have to get out and pretty much learn it on your own like I did. You know, some families are actually, you know, some people are actually blessed to have families that, you know, teach them you know, the, the things that you're supposed to do in life, save, you know, conserve, you know, put things up for a rainy day, you know, they didn't really teach me stuff like that, they taught me, but they didn't really teach me in-depth stuff like that, my mom pretty much had to do that by herself, you know, after I turned like eight or nine, my dad just got ghosts on me, you know, and it still hurts to this day, but after knowing what I know, that he was behind the whole time, of keeping me away from my family, even though my dad has reached out so many times, they have changed numbers, they have moved different places, tried to make sure my dad didn't find me, you know, and there was a lot of people that said, you know, since this has been going on, it's like some of the inner circle that I have, and they know what's going on, but they see the pictures, you know, uh, I'm going to show you guys these pictures again, um, you know, it, it's just, everybody has a twin, but this right here, you know, for me to have a past history and just to know that my dad is my twin flame, it's just crazy because it's like, you know, even though he's a celebrity, I never really looked at him that way. He was like my prince, you know, I didn't, you know, my prince, I, I never uh, really looked at him as the artist or the prince or <clears throat> the celebrity. I never really looked at him like that. I just saw him as a sweet person. You know, a person I see in my dreams all the time, you know, he would constantly tell me in my dreams, he would look at me and it was like he would have uh, this black outfit on. Um, matter of fact, it was the same outfit he kind of had on um, uh, in Purple Rain. It was the, the, the black with the, the, the white scarf around or whatever with the white buttons going down the pants or whatever. Um, it was kind of like that, and it was weird, because at that time, that was, like, before that movie had came out, but that's what I saw, you know, um, there would be times that, you know, we would play around, you know, run around playing Dip Dip Goose, or Tag, or something like that, or Hide and Go See, he would make me think he was my brother, but the way he would talk to me, and comfort me, and protect me, he was a father, to me and then you know when I told my mom about my dreams after a while after my mom and my dad my mom and my dad were separated um I went ahead and told my mom you know these are the dreams that I've been having I've been having them about Prince you know I don't know why you know and I'm, I'm crying to her I, I don't know why that um dad doesn't want me to talk about him or I can't listen to him my adopted dad um and uh And she was just like, baby, I just, I don't understand, I don't understand myself, you know, and she was, she didn't see, she didn't like to see me cry, you know, she didn't like, you know, to see me upset, especially when it came to my dad, you know, and I said, I just want to know why am I having dreams about him, 
and you know why every time our, our dreams will start you know because it seemed like they got worse after I talked to him the first time but you know after he bought me that dollhouse it was crazy my adopted dad before we came back to the states he had busted my, my dollhouse up that was a very expensive dollhouse it was like one of those real big ones like back in the day when you go to the JC Penney's catalog and you see them ones for like almost six to twelve hundred dollars you know it was a very big detailed house and you know I know he spent a lot of money on it and you know my mom got upset like why you know that did not I said nothing else broke coming over you know coming overseas and dark stuff shit except that house why did you do that you know my mom and my my adopted dad um got into it really bad for that and she was out for for a while you know she was upset you know, it's just like, that's the only thing she has from him. You would, you know, anything that I had that was pertaining to my dad or anything that showed aspects of anything that had something to do with him, it was sent for that. And, you know, when I was listening to Soul Stress, you know, and she was talking about, you know, indigos do go through a lot of heartbreaking stuff. It was like really heart-wrenching. And it is. It really is. Because, I mean... I thought I was hurting for me, like, I'm trying to understand, you know, why, you know, I look at these pictures, you know, and then I see what I see, and then now I'm starting to understand, you know, why do I feel for him, why, you know, ever since I was little, I used to yearn to be around him all the time, and I used to cry and cry, and, um, and, it is still to this day, you know, I tell him I'm in good spirits, you know, despite everything else. I'm still in good spirits because I'm blessed. You know, I, I have eyes to see. I have ears to hear. I have a mouth to speak, you know, to tell you all about my story. You know, um, just to let you know, it, it, it's just like, you know, if you're going through something or you just feel like, you know, I can't go on. I've tried to contemplate suicide so many times. I actually overdosed at one, one time. Um. I had got addicted to pain pills. Um, I had had a car accident back in 2005 where I got hit by a drunk driver. And my car, well, my, my ex fiance, his car, it was a brand new 2005 Fiat Regal. And those cars are pretty big. I'm only 5'2. I'm the same height as my dad, and it's crazy. I'm only 5'2, so it was a big car. The way the car had hit me, it, my car was this way. The car hit me right on the driver's door. The the EMTs and the firefighters had to basically peel me out of the car because my whole left side was crushed. Um, and I'm thank God, I'm, you know, everything is okay. I just had a concussion. Um, and they were telling me the way the car was, it was mangled up like that. There was no way I could just have fractures and dislocations and that was it I, I, I should have been dead but obviously there was some kind of angel or something that was shielding me from it to where I just had you know I didn't really feel any pain until they like they broke broke the door off and everything got released and it was like all pain worked in at one time so I mean you go through a lot of stuff and you know you feel like ending your life is life is you know, life is too precious. There's people fighting for their lives every day. You know, there's people that have AIDS, cancer, cerebral palsy, you know, different, you know, different ailments. You know, some are terminal. Some are just like where you want it in your life, you know. And it's just, there's more. If you really just sit back and you meditate and clear your mind and try to understand why are you, what is your purpose in life? Why do you... Why do you need to be here? You know, why, you know, why is the world so cold? You know, I used to cry all the time and I still do because I, you know, sometimes I have to shut myself off from, you know, the news or social media. You know, you see kids out here cutting, you know, you know, uh, puppies ears off. I saw this on Facebook the other day and I got so pissed, you know, I'm like, somebody need to cut your ears off like that, you know, and I, I don't want to hurt anybody or anything like that. But, you know, stuff like that pisses me off when, when especially the cruelty to animals, you know, they, you know, people try to say, um, a lot of animals are dangerous. I feel like if you, you provoke them 
or if you teach them. It's just like people. You you can't hate nobody unless you're taught to or if you, you know, provoke somebody. You know, there's things that goes on in life, you know, nobody, you know, we can't understand the reason why we're going through them, but, you know, at that time. But when you get past it, it's a blessing. It really is. You know, I say prayed up, you know, there's people who are like, there's no God, there's no God, you know. If you feel like there's God, why do you think God would have let you uh, stay away from your dad? You know, that that's just the worst thing because now they, you know, with my inner circle, all the things I've been through, you know, I've, I've accidentally uh, sent a, a mass text message out to all my friends and my phone because it was one day I had took over 200 and some pills. Because my my adopted dad had said something so messed up to me the way I was ready to end my life. Because I told him all I did is want to be loved. I just wanted my family. And he, you know, he basically programmed me to forget a lot of freaking things. You know, and I'm just like, you know what? I, you know, I loved my dad. I was always a daddy's girl. But come to find out, I was a daddy, daddy's girl. But it just wasn't with the daddy I was with it was the one I was supposed to be with and um I see that now it's just like I had to go through things to get to it and this is my message out to you guys you know if you're going through something you know it was meant for me to make a video you know all all the I synchronize a lot you know synchronicity you know I have numbers every time I, I see numbers every freaking where you know like um two 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 or you know 11 11 12 12 6 6 6 6 you know I, you know i freaked out when i saw 6 6 6 6 i'm like oh my god is that an omen to me you know and then come to find out it's not it's actually a good thing you know it's basically to balance out yourself you know if you you know you have things that you're pondering about your life or thing you know life-changing paths or anything and you start seeing a set of numbers like i see 222 right now um is just look the numbers up, you know, go by the meaning, you know, see, you know, maybe you reach, I mean, it took a couple of days for me to figure out this is what I was supposed to do. They told me, you know, share, share, share your, your vision, your God given talent, use that, use that as a tool to get, get, get your testimony out there to people. Cause there's a lot of people telling dis different te testimonies, you know, for me to have, you know, it was a blessing in the sky for me. For me to watch a video trying to understand you know this i've never looked up indigos in my life and just you know day before yesterday um i was walking, watching uh souls trips 11 11 and she just started talking about twin flames and stuff like that and she was talking about the characteristics of it and i'm like oh my gosh you know i dropped out of school i don't i don't like hey how's the weather or you know, how are you doing today? You know, what about those, you know, cowboys? You know, stuff like that. I hate stuff like that. I, you know, I, I'd rather talk about deep, interesting stuff. You know, uh, I don't like being around a large group of people, you know, because it just seems like um, my head's going to explode. It really does. And it just seems like, you know, um, I, I constantly have headaches. You know, I feel dizzy, and it just seems like since my dad's passing and his transition, you know, we've always been connected. You know, we've always been connected. I've seen in dreams all the time, you know, but it, it seemed like for a while when I moved back to the state where my dad is, you know, it just seemed like my dreams and stuff cut off. And I don't know if it's just because he has military training where you know they had to go overseas and do different procedures so it's just like he knows what to say and what not to say to keep keep you know to know what he wants to know you know and just to know i didn't know that with indigos they program you. you're like it's just like there's no time you know there's no <clears throat> we're just in limbo to me it's just a circle of life but there's really no time they just put a date on it you know just gave you some numbers and say okay this is the time even though time really doesn't exist to me you know time really doesn't to me um 
I was always one with nature. You know, I love you know animals, and I always you know I always used to ask mom, can I have a frog? Can I have a turtle? Can I have a fish? Can I have a dog? You know, I used to always love animals. I still do. Um, it's just all these different characteristics I see. You know, I you know it it's really a curse and a blessing at the same time. It's a good thing when you can bring hope to somebody. Um, you know, I don't know if I said in my other video, it was a lady that I saw. Yes, I did. And, you know, and I feel good about things like that. You know, when you are able to change somebody's life, I don't know, this woman could have been contemplating suicide, you know. And I just feel like, you know, when you lose somebody dear to you, and I understand that now when your heart breaks, it's like, I feel like my heart is broken. Sometimes, like, you know, since he's passed, it just feels like a part of me died with him. And now I see, you know, you know, uh, now I see what twins feel like, you know. And I always used to wonder back in the day, you know, I was like, I always wonder if I had a twin. Because I always felt like I had a twin, you know, even though I got my paperwork back, you know, filing from a hospital. And it says I wasn't, but I always felt like a twin and I just didn't know it was a twin of Wayne. And, you know, growing up, my mom always used to tell me, you know, you look just like from, you know, when she was trying to get clues out before she actually told me, you know, she was saying, you know, your grandparents on your, your mom's side, I think my mom, my grandmother was like a college teacher or my grandfather worked for the city or something like that. And then my grandfather on my, my grandparents on my father's side, they were talking, my mom kept telling me, you know, your grandmother was a blues singer, you know. And I always heard the name Maddie Della Shaw. And I never knew who it was. It was a very beautiful name. I said, Oh, she sounds so so French, you know, so you know, I didn't know who she was. She's like, You don't know who Maddie Della Shaw is? I said, No. And you know, and she would tell people that's Maddie, Maddie Shaw's granddaughter. And I knew I never knew a Maddie Shaw, so I never knew uh I never knew who Maddie Shaw was, so I was just like, well, she must not be talking about me. You know, she would tell somebody that, and they'll look over, and it, next thing you know, I'll hear somebody, so that means that's who I think it is, child? They're like, yep. So we were like, oh my gosh, because I, I mean, I look like my dad ever since I was a baby. You know, it's like, I look at some of my childhood pictures, and I'm just like, I never stopped looking like him, so I don't, you know, I just don't understand my dad deals with that, and I, I guess I'll never get that answer on the reason why he still to this day, you know, he has information, he has numbers, you know, and I don't understand why, um, why, why, why he doesn't want me to reconnect with my family, even though I long to do that, you know, I've missed out, I never got a chance to even say goodbye, and, you know, and, and I mean, that still hurts to me, and I, I just, you know, I, I guess because I'm new to this, I don't feel like I want to cry on on video I really don't um because it was it's still to me I, I feel like it's not fair but you know I think everything happens for a reason I guess I had to go through this just for people to know my story and just to know you know they might go through hard times or shortcomings and it's just like wow if Roz went through this you know maybe I possibly can you know um but like I said I'm not trying I'm I have nothing to lose. There's everything to gain from this, and it's not like fame or anything like that. It's the family. Love is first to me. Love, you know, everything else is, is meant to happen. God will put that in my my place for it to happen. But for me, it's you know I want to meet my family. You know, I need to meet my family. I need to be connected back with them. It's just like a a piece of the puzzle that it has been missing for so many years. You know, I can watch these shows like on Long Lost Family um, about these people reconnecting with their family and I just fall, you know, because I want that to be really so bad. And, you know, I, I try, you know, doing understandings, you know, especially, you know, I, I was always wondering why um, I was much more connected, you know, with my dad, you know. And now I understand why, you know, because I thought death, you know, I always thought, I know death is just like, that's the circle of life. We all, you know, we, we don't really die, we just take a different form. So it, it just, it was really hard for me to, to go through all this, the awakening, the ascension, and then 
you know, knowing that you're adopted is bad enough as it is, especially how, if, you know, the way I found out, I found out looking through my military records, you know, because I had to go from a different military base to a different installation. And, you know, going through my childhood years, you know, I was just like, oh, yeah, I had whooping cough and, you know, um, uh, you know, I had infant typo when I was a baby. I say in and out of the hospital. I was really sick. Um, I say, I guess my parents told me I say in and out of the hospital for like the first eight or nine months because they, 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 they adopted me after like eight or nine weeks. So, um, after that, they told me I was, I say sick leave. There was always something wrong with me. I had like rare blood. So they, they said I just constantly stay sick a lot. And I, I really hate hospitals because I stayed there a lot during my life, you know. I still had my scars and stuff uh, from when I was little when I stayed in the hospital um, from whatever I had on my arm or whatever. Um, and it was just a lot of things I went through. You know, at age 26, I started having seizures for like six months. And um, I didn't know why. It started off as a panic attack, and as soon as I started having the seizures, where it felt like my head was going to explode. And I went through all these series of tests and everything, and they told me it was genetic. And, you know, I went to my mom, um, well, I went to my dad, because my mom had already passed away, and I told my dad, I said, look, I really need to find out my family, because, uh, you know, um, I'm having, they said there was a shadow on the left side. Uh, and I don't know where it is, and it has some memory loss. Um, I don't know if it was from the car accident that I had, or uh, uh, I got into an altercation where a cop beat me up, like about a year later. So it was, yeah, <laughs> I went through a lot of stuff. And that could have been from that too, um, and I didn't know, but um, they told me it was basically genetic, so I just recently found out after my dad died that he had it when he was younger, and he only had it for a little while, and, you know, and I just felt like it was just one day, I, I said, I don't think I'm going to be sick anymore, and then my, my baby was like, Mama, you going to be okay? I said, I don't think I'm going to be sick anymore, and after that, I did not have any more seizures after that, and they told me it was kind of cold for, I don't know, whatever genetic term we had, you know, medical term we had. But, um, uh, you know, I'm still on this journey, and um, Long Lost Family is supposed to be helping me find my family. So, uh, I just hope that I'll be able to reconnect with them and get a little bit more answers. It's like, I'm oh, good that I'm, glad I'm finding, finally finding out, you know, the reason why I'm having these rages or you know I feel like my heart's breaking and you know I just feel like I need to be around my dad I want him close to me I want him to touch me I want you know I want to smell him it's like a lot of times that I I dream about him I wake up and I smell like lilac and honeysuckles sometimes um and that you know it's just a lot of dreams that I have we sit there and talk and we hug each other and we tell each other we miss each other and it just seems like you know I really you know, I really, really wish I could have saw him in physical form, you know, um, but I'm just blessed that even though he has passed on to a different, uh, sorry, my baby, <laughs> my baby Flippy, um, that uh, I wish I could have seen him in a different form and, you know, physical form and would have been able to really talk to him. But, you know, I said it, it, everything happens for a reason. I really probably don't understand the real full reason on the, re you know, on the reason why that, um, that we were, now my cat wants to, to play. Sorry, my cat wanted to get <laughs> thirsty for a minute. He, he wanted to play. And biting on, on my arm and everything, but back to what I was saying. Um, it, it I, I rather I want to be close to my family, you know, I want to learn more about myself, you know. Uh, being an indigo, I mean, it, it's you know, a lot of people are just you know, some people are, that I talk to, they're like, wow, but then some they seem like they, you know, they're kind of jealous of the situation because I know some people that I know 
it takes a lot of practice to do the things that indigos naturally are able to do. And I'm just like, you know, just be grateful, <laughs> you know, with us. We can't shut that off. You know, we, we, you know, I say to myself a lot, I seclude myself, even though it's not healthy, it's at that time for me learning about myself and grieving and dealing with what I have to deal with because I'm going through all this on my own. You know, my children know but they really don't understand, but now it was like with my adopted dad and my stepmom, they're really narcissistic. And they would make it always seem like I was being a spoiled brat or something like that. Or, you know, trying to make me always look, you know, they always put a negative light on me all the time. And now I know the reason why now is, you know, because it was something that was special about me. They know they could never, you know, matter how much you wanted to paint me the different color, it was always going to be what it was. You know, I used to tell my dad and them, I said, I got royalty in my blood. You know, it's like the finer things in life. I always like different stuff. And, you know, my favorite color has always been blue and purple, blue and purple, blue and purple. And it's just like now I'm starting to see things in colors. You know, when, you know, I can, when I, when I listen to a song, I don't hear it. I, you know, it, I envision it, but with me, I don't know, it's weird. I'm still trying to research that too, to figure out when I see things. I see color, you know, when I hear the music, I see colors, you know, and it's just, it's, it's just really hard to explain. So, you know, um, like my other video, I hope I was able to, you know, to help somebody out, you know, maybe you're looking at my video and you're going through things and it's like, man, you know, with her situation, this is really messed up, you know, and it's hard to believe, you know, um, as I was saying before, um, I had talked to lawyer's office and you know um uh i'm not gonna you know show all the paperwork but you can see you know it's from carver county you know i guess that's you know somewhere in minnesota where that is taking care of his estate you know and i showed all this and i had to write the reason why i felt like he was my dad and you know, even though I had, you know, I had showed my friends, you know, and I told them, you know, I want you to tell me the truth. You know, does this seem convincing to you? Because, I mean, I'm not trying to convince anybody of a lie. This is the truth. I felt this way since I was a little girl, you know, and they're, you know, they were like, well, why didn't you try to get in contact with them before? I, you know, but if your parents aren't willing to want to tell you the truth, you know, and I was, you know, I love my mom and I forgive her. But, you know, I know I can't change back time, but if I could, I just really wish they would have been honest with me in the first place. And it probably would have saved a lot of the headache. Now, when all this stuff comes out, it's going to be a hot mess. You know, I don't want nobody, I, I never was angry at my dad. I, you know, I don't, you know, I always constantly hear him telling, telling me he's sorry. You know, and I keep on hearing, I apologize, I'm sorry. And I said, it's not his fault. You did everything you could do to get back in my life. You know, you wanted to be with me uh, when, you know, when you found out that you had a baby that was coming into the world, you know. And it, it was sad because I really don't know the whole situation, but it's just like looking from the outside in, in my opinion, it was like my mom had told me my grandparents on my mom's side really didn't care for my dad because my dad was like with a lot of women. You know, they called him a woman either. He had a wild life. Um, so I guess they didn't want him or his side of the family, I don't know, um, to have me. So she went to my grandmother's in Oklahoma to give birth to me and then come back to Minnesota. You know, so I guess it would be out of state law so he couldn't adopt me. So, um, at the time when, you know, I was born in 1977, so that was, you know, right when he, right, it was like either right when he was getting ready, it was like a couple of, uh, either a month later on down the line when he signed on with Warner, Warner Brothers, and by that time it was already too late, you know, I was with another family already, you know, even though my mom wanted me to know. My dad never did. My adopted dad never did. And I don't even call him my dad anymore. I just call him by his last name. I'm not going to say his last name. But, you know, it just really disgusted me. 
just causing my dad because I feel like if you're my dad, you wouldn't have went out your way 39-39. I'm sorry. Um, to go out your way to keep me from my family. You know, it was just like that would have been just extra love that I could have received. But, you know, now since knowing all that I know, maybe, you know, I had, you know, I still don't understand the reason. Like I said earlier, I don't understand the reason on me being apart from him. But, you know, like people say, you know, if God exists, you know, why did God keep him away? I said, actually, God was the one that kept on trying to tell him to call, you know, for me to say my name. And, they, you know, and all I was doing is what I was told not to tell anybody your name. But then I'll start saying this seems more, this is more about me than it has something to do with you guys. So, you know, by the time I wanted to, to find out everything, they would up and changed the number. And I, you know, I never was able to contact my dad again. But, you know, I even told the agency, I said, you know, if you get in touch with my family, they have to know, you know, look in their phone records. You know, I say, I know you can't look in my family's phone records, but maybe somebody can look in his because he's passed away already. And you will find all kind of evidence in the phone numbers if you find a certain, certain numbers that have something to do with Georgia. Because I live in the state of Georgia. So I said, if you find anything with area codes matching this certain numbers and we're at this certain address, that's my parents because they kept changing the number. And, you know, I told my ex-fiance, I said, you know, I said, now I'm getting it. Now I know why. Remember I said they kept on telling me how they kept changing their numbers because this annoying person kept finding their number. They don't know how they got it. You know, and I have some family members that don't really believe me and it doesn't make any sense. You know, like. You know, if this is your dad, how did he find out it was a close adoption? I said, you know what? Like he says, you know, they always tell you money don't buy you happiness, but it will damn sure pay for the search. <laughs> so, my dad, you know, if you really want to find your child, if you really are determined to, you will do any and everything to find your child. And it was the fact that, you know, um, I had talked to him, like, I think it was a couple of days before he passed away, and he sounded really bad. It was really hoarse on the phone, and he says, I, you know, I've been sick, you know, for a while now. I just can't shake it. I just can't shake it. I'll get sick, and then next thing you know, he's like, I don't know if somebody's putting something in my food or nothing. I might be paranoid. You know, I didn't know, and I told him, you know, I'm sorry, sir, you know, because my stepmom, she's a, um, she's a caregiver. So she was telling me it was one of her patients, but she never had me talk to her patients before. And she was just like shoving, you know, the phone in my face and then leaving the room. And I'm just like, how do you give me this phone and not tell me who it is? And, you know, he was part of our phone because she had my speaker. So I guess it just, he just really didn't want to have anything to say and let them hear it. And there'll be an issue or whatever. But I told him, you know, I'll talk pray for you, you know, because he really sounded like he was next to death. And that was like a very scary thing to me. But I knew, even though his voice was really hoarse and cracky, um, I knew I knew that voice from somewhere and just couldn't figure out what it was. So um, it was like very, my family was kind of corrupt. <laughs> well, not kind of, but really is. You know, so they had, you know, they were torturing both of us at the same time. And telling him one thing, I think they probably had told them from, you know, the feeling that I'm getting and the visions that I'm seeing. They had told him that I knew about him and didn't want anything to do with them. And they knew, excuse my language, that was a damn lie. They knew I loved my dad with all my heart. Even though before I actually knew he was my dad, they knew. And she would throw in my face, oh, such and such went to a Prince concert weekend and she and I said why would you do that if you know I really want to meet him He's like oh you know your brother you know went to an after party and Prince was there and he talked to him and I'm just like you know she would they would just really do hurtful mean things to me and then rub in my face especially if it had something to do with my dad and I'm just like you know you know people are like oh I would do this I would do that or why haven't you said anything and it's just like you know what everything happens for a reason but they're like people pleasers, and I'm the type of person, you know, only person I'm going to, you know, impress is myself. <laughs> so I, I don't have time to be pleasing folks, because after it's all said and done, you don't have to be the one stuck with everything. So um, with them, I just feel like the main thing that they strive for, that they yearn for, is going to be the same, you know, the, the same thing that they 
you know, to strive for. It's going to be the same thing that stabs them right dead in the back. You know, because when all this comes out, you know, they told my brother, you know, my stepbrother, when he was trying to help me find my family, they talked him out of it. And it was just like, um, he was like, well, it doesn't make any sense. I said, now, um, I said, now, what was their excuse on saying this? It's like, well, why don't you just get out the front stand and find your mom? I said, I want to find both of my parents. But, you know, I said at that time, my dad had already been passed. So all I could do was for my mom. I said, I've been looking for my mom for years. And then come to find out, my parents knew the name, her name, where she was from, and everything. I had to find out on my own, you know. And um, because when I asked him, he was just like, "Who told you this? Did you talk to her?" And I'm just like, "Oh, so I guess it is the truth, you know?" Because he was just like, "Well, if Prince is your dad, how come you were born in Oklahoma?" I said, "Well, she's not from Oklahoma. I have family that lived in Oklahoma. She was from Minnesota." Then my dad's a pastor, and then you hear him up under his breath say, oh, shit. So, you know, it's just a lot of drama. Just a lot of drama. You know, um, 45, 45. <laughs> so I'm seeing numbers. I'm seeing numbers in this argument. But, uh, you know, and it's just a really, you know, heart-wrenching thing that I went through. You know, and I guess it was meant for me to tell you guys my story. You know, it's like very far-fetched and crazy Anytime I sit down and tell somebody this story, you know, even when I was on the agency, it's just like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But thanks to them, you know, even though I had the information that I had, all these memories came flying back, you know, because they had to ask you so many questions and they have to ask you, ask you the same questions, but just in different ways. And I never changed my story, you know. Um, she would go back to it and come back to it and I will still have the same story. You know, because if the person, you know, I said, do you do this all the time? And she was just like, yeah, but it's more intense with you since it's a celebrity. And um, and I said, okay, it's fine. You know, I don't mind answering questions. I have nothing to hide. You know, um, it, it's, you know, I just want to be with my family. You know, I don't care about the money. I don't, you know, that's, you know, if it's meant for you to have money, you know, I don't chase after stuff like that. You know, my main concern is finding my family knowing who I am, you know, that's, that's my goal, that's my goal, um, and, you know, just to help anybody out there going through the same things that I'm going through, and you're trying to find yourself and know, you know, if you have the same characteristics, you didn't like school, you don't like government, anything that has to do with the government, everything seems like a lie, you know, the things they put on TV, you know, you know, certain about about certain things you know the zika virus the the ebola you know if it wasn't about the you know police brutality and all of a sudden you know you know then they're talking about you know the zika virus is about the pregnancy you know pregnant women and stuff like that putting all these warnings up and scaring people ebola and you know all this stuff come now to meningitis now you don't hear nothing about this stuff anymore that's why i'm just like you know i don't i don't get down with the news thing you know I, I do but then I don't because you need to be you know in the now to know but it's just like dealing as as at Unico it, it's a lot further than that it's a lot deeper than that because you get the, you know some people I don't know about all Indigos I, I know me on um, my my perspective about it it's like when I hear things I can visualize and when I visualize I can feel and really feeling that's just too much <laughs> so me, I don't watch news too much. I, I watch it when I need to. I read, you know, anything. So, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. You know, if you're going through something and, you know, just, just watch this video. You know, uh, leave your comments, you know, thoughts. Please, you know, no negative things. You know, on my page, I, I, on my blog, you know, I just, I don't like anything negative. You know, if you feel like you're going to say something, you know, bad, just, you know, just go on to the next video. Or, you know, but it's just, this video is just to empower people. You know, you, you're going through stuff. It's not going to always be that way. Everything is temporary. Everything is temporary. It's just a circle of life that you have to go through. So, everybody have a blessed day. And I will see you on the trip side. Peace. Wow.